Hey there, welcome to episode 46 of Dive Bar Comedy. I'm Wild Joe, I'm here with GT. What's up, Wild Joe, how you doing? I'm pretty good, uh, you gotta get a little quicker with that mic pass, GT. I don't know if you need to get closer to me or just uh, stop pausing for so long uh, with the mic pass. Also, uh, I threw out that old cord. I had a cord that was making a a sound that you were very upset about a couple podcasts ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cracking and all that. Seems like the uh, cord was messed up. I heard you've been dreaming. You were telling me you 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 were out doing par- you were partying in your dreams and you were you were confronting me saying like all these things and how I should be mad and angry. I was like, "What are you talking about in the middle of the night?" I mean, like, it's 3 a.m., 4 a.m., you talking about the fact that you were out partying in your dreams, that this happened, that happened, that I should be mad? No, I, in my dream, in my dream, you were very mad. You were very upset. I didn't say you should be mad in real life. But in my dream, I was out until 4 a.m. I was talking to some guy. He was trying to get with me. Your mom was sitting right there. She saw the whole thing. But I didn't even do anything with him. I didn't even kiss him. And then... uh I came back to your place where there was some kind of party going on and your friends were there, which obviously it was a dream because you don't really have any friends or parties. But um, th- then I found you and I tried to talk to you and you just wouldn't speak to me and you looked really upset and I followed you into this room. And uh, for a minute I thought you were going to slap me and I was like thinking, like, just slap me, slap me, which I thought that was kind of funny. I really wanted you to slap me in my dream. Yeah, uh, I don't know what's the deal. Um, you're always dreaming. You're always telling me all these dreams. For some reason, when I go to bed, I I think I dream and I wake up. I don't give a damn. I just move on. You never wake up in the middle of a dream with all these babies crying and uh, waking you up from your sleep. You never wake up and you're right in the middle of a dream. So that's when you remember it. It happens to me probably once every blue moon. I don't know. I, I For some reason, I hardly ever dream. Everybody dreams like every hour and a half you're dreaming. It's part of your sleep cycle. But uh, you have to wake up right when you're dreaming or right after you're dreaming or you won't remember. But uh, maybe you just sleep through everything so you you never wake up and get your sleep interrupted. But, yeah, I've been having a lot of dreams. I had some other dream just just last night, but I can't remember it. But, yeah, that was an interesting dream where, uh, where I didn't cheat on you, but your mom called. But when I was talking to you, when I was trying to hug you, you were on the phone with your mom and she was giving you some type of version of what happened that made you very upset. And uh, and then I felt like you should be mad. Like I felt guilty for a minute. But then I realized, like, wait a second, you're out every night till 2 a.m. And I never say anything. So what are you acting all butthurt about me being out till 4 a.m. one night? Big deal. I didn't even do anything with the guy just because I was talking to him. Yeah. Um I sometimes dream, but I hardly ever, hardly ever dream. Sometimes I'll be like hoping I would dream, but I don't. I don't know. One thing I realized that I was driving on the freeway the other day. And I saw billboard after billboard on the 91 freeway or the 105 in Southern California. Asian women are all over the billboards for gentlemen's club spearmint rhino asian women are the hottest thing right now i remember back in the 80s it was blonde white girls in the 90s jennifer lopez's came around they were all over the billboards 90s and the 2000s nowadays i see asian women on billboards i think that's that's what's the hottest asian women are the ones who are making the big bucks nowadays yeah i think asian women do really well um in strip clubs if that's what you're talking about uh a lot of my girlfriends are asian there is an asian fetish there's a lot of white guys that only go for asian girls they're also getting more popular on uh movies and tv which is good for them because they were really underrepresented and they weren't even complaining but now we have ali wong and she um has her movie out now and uh Asian women are coming up so you're right it's a kind of like a style thing it goes by era and uh, white people are out of style 
we did this agency panel at Flappers and um, these agents were talking about what gets people booked and, and somebody raised their hand and said, well, you know, is it a problem to be black? Is it harder to get booked when they're black? And the agent said, no, actually the only person that's going to have a hard time getting booked in this environment is white people. Everybody else is getting booked. If you're white, that's the time that you're going to have a problem these days. Yeah, I see Asians and I see um, Kim K types like Armen- I s- in the valley. I see Armenian girls on billboards who are s- stripping. <laughs> I, for some reason, they look Armenian. I don't know if they're Armenian or Hispanic, but I see Armen- Kim K types right now K- with a Kim K look on billboards. Yeah, I think uh, that Kim K thing, that's a huge fad that um, made the Armenians hit the map. Nobody knew what an Armenian was before that, but um, it's been going for a while. Now they're all married with kids, so it's time to move on, and it uh, seems like it, it's moved on to Asians. You're right. It, it was, uh, you know, they had the, the white era in the 80s, and and then the boob jobs were popular and in the 90s, and then... It moved on to now butt jobs are popular and the Nicki Minaj kind of look and, you know, style f- fashion goes through phases back in the 1920s, which is a long time ago. Now it's almost 100 years ago, but they used to bi- bind their breasts down um, to make themselves look flat chested because that was the fashion. And then, you know, comes around to people getting huge boob jobs and, and that being the fashion. So fashion cha- changes every decade. Now I see women with fake butts, and I've never been with a girl with a fake butt. I've been with a lot of girls with fake tits, but no fake butts. And I always now I always wonder what what what's it like to be with a girl with a fake butt? You know, big, nice, round, fake butt. Well, they are round. That's for sure. They're definitely round. Um, I wouldn't say they're that nice they usually look out of proportion to the rest of the girl but um you know uh you could just always grab a fake ass and um i know you you say you can grab ass in a friendly way you've told me that before that it's just a friendship thing so maybe just grab some round fake ass you see and say oh it was just a friendly grab don't worry about it you know this um uh fake ass came in just just around the time I was getting married and I never really had the chance, you know, there's always that certain type of body you always want to have sex, sex with, but you never had the chance, man. So I guess fake ass was one of them. Okay. You want me to get a fake ass? I'll get a big, huge fake ass. You can grab it. So you're, so, you're saying you're going to get implants? Yeah, I'll get giant, giant ass implants just for you, baby. Forget it. I like your ass the way it is. I'm starting to, you know what? The other day I was, uh, I overheard some conversations between comedians. A lot of comedians, they come from um, upper middle class families. They're rich kids that their parents pay for their, uh, their for them being here. Yeah, it's either that or they're homeless living in their car. But um, I know I read uh, Amy Schumer's biography, and she's from an upper class, upper middle class family, and uh, and a lot of the people that make it are because you do need support if you're going through that phase where you're just traveling around and doing shows for almost nothing or nothing. Uh, you you can't afford to do it with no support, or you're living in your car like a lot of comics do. I don't know if they end up making it, but if they do, it's a great story. Yeah, um, you, when they first hit hit LA, you can just see the way where they're the way they're dressed. They're dressed all upper class, and you can tell they come from a rich family. And then they're all of a sudden changing their style to looking kind of like, uh, uh, you know, worn off clothes and kind of look downscale. You know, uh, I think they're just trying to like show a different side. I, I mean present them in a different way well i have a, a guy i know who ended up uh starting comedy doing huge shows right away because he's friends with this super rich guy he has like professional photography for all of his um posters and stuff and and he's able to promote and 
he also has that confidence. When you have money, you have more confidence. So he just goes into the club like as if he's a professional already. And uh, yeah, he's only been doing it maybe a year or two, but every flyer I see is like professionally produced and they're all at big clubs like Improv and the Ice House and, and good shows. Yeah. That's what I noticed around the scene. Uh, I, I noticed a lot of comedians, they come from uh, wealthy families and uh, who their parents are doctors, lawyers, or they'd be bragging about it. Not a lot of them, but I see probably half of them. And, um, and that's what. Yeah, they, they might not have the street cred, but um, they probably actually get ahead faster than those who are just living in their car. But uh, anyway, we have some shows coming up. Uh, this show right here is going to be fun. We have some of our return comics, uh, Sarah Halstead and Sean Lynch and Deanna Dixon on this episode. And then we always have shows coming up around the L.A. area. So if anybody is in L.A. or can travel to L.A., come to one of our shows. They're only $10, and they're a lot of fun. Yeah, our next show is on June 27th at the Liquid Zoo. It's going to be Wild Joe's birthday and um, at the Liquid Zoo, and we're going to have a GT's Comedy Jam at the same time. And we're going to be doing Dive Bar Comedy podcast before the show we're going to be interviewing comedians it's going to be a ten dollar cover so show up it's at the liquid zoo in van nuys starts 9 p.m the podcast starts at eight so definitely show up and we have another show coming up on july 28th at a new club called scarlet lady saloon in culver city on Sepulveda, and that one is once again on July 28th, starts 9 p.m., and the podcast starts at 8. Um, so be there, it's a $10 cover. Yeah, that's on the west side, Culver City, so we should get some different people there. Uh, a lot of our shows have been in the valley. So anyway, with that, we'll let you uh, tune in for the rest of our show. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, wherever you listen to podcasts, whether you're on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, um, anywhere you listen, YouTube, we're on Facebook at GT's Comedy Jam. Uh, make sure to subscribe and listen to us every Wednesday. Attention all drinkers. Attention all drinkers. Do you like a smooth tasting vodka that goes down with no burn? How about Global Vodka, straight from Italy? Check it out. You can find it at global-vodka.com. Not only does it have a smooth, great taste, it also is gluten-free and organic for you health nuts. So try Global Vodka. You can find it at global-vodka.com. Or next time you're in L.A., check it out at Universal Bar and Grill. Hey, guys, uh, we're at the smallest... Dive bar. It's, it's, this ain't the smallest dive bar in L.A. Not maybe the, not the smallest the in L.A. Tiki is the smallest dive bar, but the, you know, I don't know. The Lotus Lounge is probably like the. It's uh, cozy here. It's not too big. You're right, but it's not that small. It's got a bar, a long bar. It's got a pool table at the back. It's got a stage, small stage. The smallest place that we perform. And a crazy owner. Don't forget the crazy owner. Crazy but very nice. She's uh, she's crazy but she's nice. Are you gonna have to omit that part out? No, <laughs> she doesn't listen to this. Okay, we're at Lotus okay, Lounge. We're at, we're at Lotus Lounge with Sarah Halstead. But you know what? I noticed as I was trying to find this place. I mean, I I've been here millions of times, but their sign is pretty poor. You know, it's, it's not um, lit. Really inconspicuous from the street. You can't really see it. I had to drive. I drove by it. I had to drive by a couple of times. You never. Here. You've performed here once. Yeah, I like it here. It, it, they redid it though, no? Yeah, yeah. a little they bit. They redid the outside. Yeah, it looks a little like, bit. You know, I I have a show at a really small dive bar that I think may be smaller than this one. Really? Yeah. Where's that one. at? It's called Otis, or it's called. Um, I was looking at the is Lotus. It's called uh, Oyster House. Oh, yeah, Oyster it's House in the valley. In, in the the valley. valley. 
And this is yeah. a regular show you do it's every a regular show. So that's my new thing since I've seen you both. Okay. I started this show in the Valley. It's every Monday night at 8 p.m. Um, really intimate, like six comics, and we all go 15 minutes. Okay. And, and the crowd is great. And you have your own nice podcast great. too, right? Yeah, I have a podcast. I've had that for a while, and that's going at well. And that's at the comedy. You got a lot of people, every week. lot of viewers. Uh, what's that? What's the like? What's the listeners? They get you get people uh, yeah. listening. Yeah, you know it grows. It's hard it's with slowly, a podcast. It's slowly growing. You know, did you know that there are six hundred and sixty thousand podcasts? Wow. No. Six hundred and sixty thousand. So like that is. I mean, just like everyone and their mother has one, and and in addition to all the content, like all the shows and you know um, YouTube wow. and Hulu and Netflix and Amazon Prime and you know all these. Um, all these networks, it's like, you know, I, there's like almost, we're, we're almost too populated with content 660,000. Well, yeah, and because you don't know which is good and which is not. Right, exactly. So it's like, how do you get people to listen to your shit now? You know? Wow. It's, it's like really tough. And, like, and, and you're not, you're, you're talking about what you're competing against. You're actually competing against radio, which I'm like, who is this to that? But even yeah, well, GT's listening to AM radio, talk radio, and then the I'm listening to, uh, <laughs> I love it. That, you yeah, know, really good audiobooks. I'm always listening to I audiobooks. Like audiobooks. I like and NPR. I, yeah. I'm like constantly, I, I'm a member of audible.com, so I'm getting my free download every month or whatever. Yeah. Or not free, because I'm paying for it, but anyway, but, so but that's, that's, that's what I listen now. to, is just uh, audiobooks. And mostly I'm listening to stuff from like 100, 200 years ago, actually, I'm listening to classic oh, books. That's cool. Yeah, so oh, I'm like, that. I'm like on Charles oh, Dickens. Oh, oh yeah, good taste, girl. Yeah, they have like oh, 25 hour classics. long books that yeah. last me the whole month. You know? Yeah, that's it. That's the good stuff. They it's great, make, yeah. and nobody speaks like that anymore. No, and the words they use, the, uh, English language is a dying language. A dying honestly, language. They, they have it beautiful is. use of language. So many words that have such more fine meanings than anything you hear now. It was so much more poetic back then. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure not everybody talk like that, but those authors, no. there's nobody like that nowadays. It would be really funny if I just, like, indoctrinated that kind of language and just walked around L.A. talking like that. Well, they're, they're a little <laughs> bit more like that, actually, in London, like in England. They, a they, little bit. They very, do very use proper. better... Uh, Much better. Better words. Like, I, I was in a bar, and the bartender said, oh, that guy over there, or he probably didn't even say guy, he probably said that man over there in the phosphorescent jacket. I'm like, phosphorescent? Wow. Phosphorescent. They would never say that here. That they would say chap. neon, maybe. That yeah. gentleman. Yeah, like, that was just a bartender. Uh, I mean, yeah, they, yeah. they all have a better vocabulary than we have, that's yeah. for sure. Oh, much. oh yeah, absolutely. Um, but, yeah, getting back to the podcast, is what's really most annoying about it are these big movie stars and television stars that are starting podcasts. It's like, can't you just stay in your lane? <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't have enough attention. Yeah. You don't have enough fame. You don't have enough fortune because they're going to get monetized like that because That's of who true. they are. And then it's the little guys like us. It's like, well, how, how do we build? They need 10,000 just... listeners to get... Uh, Monetized ten thousand listeners. Oh, I thought a it was each episode. Oh, I thought it was each a hundred thousand. Each episode, 000. a month. Uh, well, that's I don't know. That's the, I, the iTunes server that I'm on. Oh, okay. Um, but, well, iTunes is a hundred thousand. Okay. An episode. Wow. Uh, no, I think a hundred thousand subscribers. subscribers. Wow, that's still yes, a lot. But it's a, a lot. lot. And how do you get that? You know, how do you? And I don't think they have ratings on iTunes of like four star, five star. I don't think people rate your podcast. I'm not sure they do. Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't see any ratings. To. Are there are there ratings on iTunes where there they are. give star ratings? There okay, are. Yeah, I, I gotta see what, if we got any stars. But you know, a lot of those things are fabricated. It's just like Yelp or uh, Amazon reviews or anything else. People just get their friends to do it. You know? Yeah. But but that's nice. I mean, it's but it's it gives good. some. I mean, there's some real ones on there. There are some. Too. I'm gonna give yeah. you guys a nice rating. Thank you. I, I, I didn't even know tonight. they had ratings on iTunes, but I'll, I'll have so. to find our podcast and see. Uh, see, we go through a server called Libsyn. Yeah, Libsyn is the host. I and, do that too. And then they put it on all of the different platforms. And so yeah. I never actually visit the platforms one by one to see what it looks like from the user's perspective. Yeah, it's really cool. The, the analytics, what they can, what can, they can track now, it's like amazing. I mean, they can track people listening in China. Oh yeah, they told me we have it's we have amazing. people listening from like Indonesia and yeah. random countries. It's just it's like wow, who's who's listening to me from Finland? Yeah. I would love to know. Yeah, we, we got some <laughs> random uh, yeah international listeners. Well, like, you guys are month. funny. Well, You're very entertaining. Well, one thing is like at least we'll thank get you. we'll get people to our shows. So we're trying to get like with the podcast gets you know it's getting yeah. it's getting more and more popular. Yeah. 
we know it's more and more listeners, but it's been going up, and we're trying to see if people eventually, eventually, listeners will come to our show. Well, well we're you know, not near a hundred thousand yet. No, but I, I tell you one thing, one positive thing. So I don't mean to be negative about podcasts because I really believe that if you were to really dive into those six hundred and sixty thousand, I wonder how many of them are consistent and do a weekly show or even a monthly show yeah. for over a year. Yeah. It's important. You know? Yeah. Yeah, we've like, done like uh, you guys do it. 41 episodes yeah. now every single Wednesday yes, and do. never missed anything. Right, right. I so. do mine weekly. I'm working my ass off with it. I don't, like, it's not yeah. a one-hit wonder. So yeah. I wonder, you know, so I think that it's just people don't realize because everyone has a podcast and it's so accessible, they don't realize until they get into it how much hard work it is. It yeah. is. Right? It's, it's a just, lot of work. It's a lot of work. You're not you're not getting paid. You're just like... Yeah. And you have to... You know, a lot of a lot of folks have to find people to interview. And, or they're yeah. just talking, just blabbing away themselves. Yeah. I don't get that either. How are you going to find... Can. How are you going to find people to interview all the time? It's people... They, they just don't want to pick anyone. And, yeah. You know, it's like... We it's got hard. a show. We just we interview comedians. Yeah, so it's part of like GT's putting You're together the shows. It. It's brilliant. And then I'm doing most of the audio. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have to be editing and you have to have it's audio editing work. software and but all I, that stuff. But you're doing a great job. It's high Thank quality. You. I oh. like it. Thank yeah. Plus, she's really good at she's really good at podcasting. You know, she is. People, you know, she comes across really good. She yeah. comes across professional. Which is gorgeous. Oh, thank you. She's well, sure. nobody like, she can see her it. like her thing. You know, <laughs> she's got a nice voice. No, thank you. No, both of you. And I like the ambient noise too. It, oh, like, there's a lot of like, traffic in this one. Yeah, but it sounds good. It's really cool. <laughs> uh, it's a good like it's a clever thing that you have here. Oh, thank yeah. It's different from a lot of. I'm glad you actually listen because a lot of people that are yeah, on the podcast and they never even listen to their own episode oh, man no i i retweeted or whatever or what, what cool. did you, you post it on facebook and yeah. then i share it and, thank you are you on twitter um I'll yeah i am, it and I I'll, am. okay yeah let's i don't use it too other. much but i'm okay. on a, yeah I'm trying to be on more i content. use twitter and you know oh you do okay yeah. i'll find you on twitter and we'll retweet yeah i'm a wild joe comedy on twitter okay so. perfect perfect cool. well, thanks for having me on yeah where's your social love... media for for people oh, that are um, listening it's at sarah j halstead s-a-r-a-h-j-h-a-l-s-t-e-a-d there's a notorious porn, porn star named sarah j um, ah. And I'm a different Sarah J. Oh, wow. So I, <laughs> it's not me, honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, man. so uh, it's a lot of thanks, fun having you on. Thanks for having me. It consistently, you guys are great. Thank I appreciate you so much. So and thanks much. for all the compliments. You're so oh, sweet. Yeah, no, all so right. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Hey, guys, you need flooring because your floors got messed up during the last party. You need flooring. Because your dog urinated all over the place and it's all brown and stained and it's buckling and it's warping because of your dog. You were out doing comedy. No one was home. Well, log on to selectflooring.biz. Selectflooring.biz. B-I-Z. And hit them up. Call them up. Say, hey, what your situation is. All right. You guys ready for the next comedian? All right, all right. We got a wonderful young lady come to the stage. She got a name that sounds like a cologne, and I like it. It's the S and the H. Put your hands together, Miss Sarah Hostel. All right, all right. Give it up for your host, even though he forgot about me tonight. And I was like the first comic here. I got here at eight o'clock. I got here early because I'm responsible, and that's why I'm not further along in my career. <laughs> I'm convinced of it. And, and since when did Lotus Lounge get nice? When is, I, this is nice, and this is a nice crowd. It's like the millennials are moving in the neighborhood now. What's going on? First time I performed here about three years ago, I had to bring my mace. And not just to and from the car. I had my mace on stage with me, okay? And that was three years ago. And here I am three years later. My career is going so well. <laughs> huh? Huh? I wrote a bit. I wrote a new bit while I was at the bar. You want to hear it? Yeah. All right. All right. Here it goes. You know, I got here at 8 o'clock. And some music was going. And they were playing Biggie Smalls. And there were some, they, not millennials, what is the generation called below millennial, Carolina's age? What do you call it? No, I'm a millennial. No, I'm a Gen Xer. No, I mean like oh, the... Oh, Gen Y. Gen Y? Okay, so they're... 
What is it? They don't matter. They don't matter? All right, we're, we'll call them the poreless creatures. They don't have pores. They're really beautiful. They're really young. And they were singing along to Biggie Smalls. And here's the thing. I think that that should be outlawed. I think that there needs to be a new rule. No poreless creatures are permitted to sing along. Because here's the thing. They're too sensitive, right? They're gender fluid. They're gender neutral. They don't want to use... And I'm pro that. Hey, I think it's fantastic. But they don't want to use pronouns. And they want to be identified as. You know, I was like, well, yeah, you can do all that. I'm all pro that, but don't sing along to I see some honeys tonight that should be having my baby. <laughs> all right? <laughs> I love it when you call me Big Papa. No, get out of here, you creature. Whatever you are. You're too, no, you can't sing along to that misogynistic stuff. You're too, you're too sensitive. <laughs> all right, I, uh... I booked a I booked a role today. I'm an actor. Yeah. Well, thanks. I had heard Hollywood needed more of those. And yeah, I booked a role on Scary Cougar. Oh. Yeah. So I was I was really flattered, right? Because I don't really get. I'm old enough to be a cougar, but I didn't think I was like confident enough to be one. <laughs> you know, like I'm not like my boobs are real, my lips are real. I'm not tan enough. You know, I'm not. I don't have the guns. You know, so I really, like, I'm, I'm very, very flattered to get this role, so I really prepare. And I work out, you know, and I go to, the, I get the spray tan, and I'm drinking buttery Chardonnay like it's water. You know how they do that? They drink the Chardonnay, those cougars. <laughs> I, I had the tan technician give me, like, some extra abs. So I show up. I'm all set. I'm prepared. They said they were going to provide the wardrobe, and they hand me a cougar suit. <laughs> the role was a real cougar, the animal. And I played it really well. That's more me. That's more me. That's what I, those are the kind of roles. It's, it's hard, us actresses over 40, the pickings are slim. Like, you take what you can get. I, uh, I star in all those true crime reenactment shows on the ID channel. <laughs> that's what I do. I mean, that's what happens to us actors who did, who did not blow Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> we ended up on ID. <laughs> I, uh, but we'll do anything. Like, we'll, you know, because we just need the work. We'll do low budget. We'll do non-union. We'll build the fucking wall. We'll do, like, when it comes time to build the wall, because let's face it, it's going to happen. You know who's going to do it? Actresses over 40. We'll all be there. <laughs> Well, I'll be there. We just want to fucking work, you know? We just, we just want to post that shit on our Instagram. Hashtag actor's life. Anything for an IMDb credit, you know? <laughs> oh man, I remember, I remember the days I used to book beautiful young ingenue. And now I'm booking former town beauty whose best days are behind her. <laughs> I really knew I was getting older and losing my looks um, the day I had to pay for my cocaine. <laughs> that was, that's really the indicator there, you know? That's, uh, and I can't afford it. I can, but it's the principle. I'm Sarah fucking Halstead. I'm a big deal on ID. I was the star of Soccer Moms Who Kill. <laughs> I, I played a schizophrenic crack whore um, on a show called Deadly Sims, and I stabbed seven men in the head with scissors and burned them alive in a barrel in my backyard. And you want me to pay for my cocaine, son? How great does Wild Joe look, by the way? She just had a baby. Congratulations, CP. Man. Yeah, that and that bit about the dildos, that's all new. That's it. I like it. It's not, yeah, keep going with that. But, and I can't I just can't believe that when you ask the audience who what lady has, has bought a big dildo recently and no one raised your hand. I can't I can't figure out why that is. Man, I uh, uh, my boyfriend and I are trying to have a baby. Um, he just doesn't know it yet. <laughs> he just, I don't think he has to know everything at this stage in the relationship. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm on a really, um, 
effective birth control right now called B45. <laughs> it's, it's, it works really well. So I think at my age, it's probably going to involve some medical intervention to get me pregnant. Uh, but I did just run into my gynecologist um, over here at Pink Taco. <laughs> That joke always takes a couple beats, but you guys got it right away. I like that. I like it here. Man, in the valley, I got to wait a good three seconds. <laughs> Stands with a pink taco. I like it. I like it. Um, I'm from Flint, Michigan. Anybody? Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you, man. Yeah, in, in lieu of flowers, if you could just send us some bottled water. <laughs> Yeah, I'm from, uh, I'm from here, Flint. We all do this. We hold up our hand to show you where we're from. And um, uh, But the, the water crisis, if you don't know, we have poisonous water, like, really poisonous. And if you drink it, it will fuck you up. Uh, but who needs water, right? Uh, but the, uh, the water crisis, it, it's been rectified. I'm not sure if you heard about this. Um, and, and who do you think rectified the water crisis? Not the government, not the president, but Jaden Smith. <laughs> That's right. It took the star of the Karate Kid remake to do the government's job. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, I, uh, I just started a podcast. I just want to plug that before I leave. Um, it's called Jimmy and Sarah on the Sunset Strip. I recorded at the Comedy Store, and you know there are six hundred and sixty thousand podcasts in America right now, and I am one of them. So, and I talk about all kinds of things. Uh, mainly things that happen right around here in Flint. Thank you for having me. Nice, good job. Another round of applause for Joe. Okay. Right, Flint, Michigan's finest. Shout out to the Michigan left. That's right, you can't make a left turn in Michigan, guys. You can only make a U turn to, make, to do it. It's fucking weird. I don't know why. It's a Michigan thing, but that's why the water's so fucked up. Hey ladies, you want some hot deals on sexy styles? Check out everydaysweetheart.com for everyday great deals on cute and sexy outfits, club wear, mini dresses, leggings, sexy lingerie, and guys, feel free to stop by too and find something hot for the girl of your dreams. That's everydaysweetheart.com and for 10% off, use the friend code Take 10. That's T A K E 1 0. Thanks a lot. Dive bar comedy. Wait, we're here with Sean Lynch. How you doing? <laughs> Sean, that's a, quite a delay. What are you oh, drinking yeah. there? Oh, yeah. Uh, some uh, Newcastle Brown Ale. Quite tasty. This is an ad for Newcastle Brown Ale brought to you by Sean Lynch. <laughs> I would endorse that. I actually would endorse Newcastle. I wouldn't mind doing a commercial for those guys. They're pretty good. Hey, Sean Lynch, you're breaking the, breaking the law right now. You're you're two feet outside on the sidewalk. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. I like to live dangerously. You know, <laughs> you know what swashbucklers we comics are. You know. So tell us, you were on TV. You do some yeah, TV yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I got a show on Amazon Prime. It's called Comics Watching Comics, and uh, we're going into season nine. Hey, can we get on that comics show? What kind of show is comics? it? Comics. Tell comics. us about like it. Open mic. No, well, it's <laughs> well, what it is is it's basically like. A bunch of like veteran comics watching a bunch of amateur comics, kind of like, uh, kind of like The Voice. How do we get on? How do we get on? Uh, well, there's a, a submission on the website to get on there. Just go to comicswatchingcomics.com and it has a whole submission thing where you can submit a video and if they like you, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll put you on the audition. Do they pick like is it like the Gong Show where they pick really ridiculous people? No, nah, some really, uh, really good comedians have come out of there. Like the winners are great. I like every once in a while we get some really bad ones because it's just funny. You and then I mean? and the comics go up just one time, or if they're a yeah, winner, they, they go over and over every week. Yeah, well, the winner of each week gets to go on to the sorry the semifinals and the finals and all that stuff. Yeah, and you're the judge. I'm one of the panelists. Yeah. Oh wow. So, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. I have Amazon Prime. I'm gonna have to check, check it, out. it out. It's good. It's good. Uh, the the series is going. We're going into series nine. We also have a uh, live at Gotham special where it's just the five judges. Doing the, uh, you know, just doing stand up at Gotham, which is kind of cool. Uh, and the other judges, is there anybody famous or who's the most famous oh, judge? Um, I don't know, man. Eddie Brill, I mean, he was the he was the booker for David Letterman for the Tonight Show for, I don't know, like 20 years. He's like he's behind kinda, the scenes famous. Yeah. Yeah, it's more like, it's more like 
behind the scenes of the industry famous. It's kind of like celebrities, really. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, it still sounds really interesting. It's and, uh, well, you seem to be a knowledgeable guy. Cool. <laughs> yeah, Sean Lynch. Thanks for coming through. Hey, Sean, uh, where can people find you online? Besides your uh, Amazon special, do you have a social uh, media presence? Yeah, uh, Geezer Lynch uh, on Instagram. Geezer? Yeah, old Geezer Lynch. Aw, yeah. come on, you're not that old. Not, well, that's it's just a nickname I got when I was really young, and it just kind of stuck because I dressed like an old man. So. Oh, no, and then, then the older you get, the, the worse it's going to make you feel inside. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Benjamin Button that way, yeah. All right, cool. Well, I can't wait to hear your set. Right on. Wow. Good times. Thanks. Hey, guys, you need a party tent. You need a commercial tent. You need a tent because you have no garage. Well, log on to webtentsale.com, W-E-B-T-E-N-T-S-A-L-E.com, and check out our site. This site is designed for commercial tents, party tents, and... Anything but camping tents. So if you need a tent because you have a party and you will need to buy it instead of renting it all the time, you're tired of throwing your money down the drain, well, go to our website, webtentsale.com, and check it out and order your tent right now. You guys ready for the next comedian? All right. I said, are you ready for the next comedian? Put the music and show some love for Mr. S.L. It's like he's a football player or he kills black people. I don't know. Mr. Sean Lynch! Still my favorite intro ever in a bar in a bad neighborhood. <laughs> this is great. Uh, hey, everybody. How you doing? Oh, man. It is great to be here and it's great to watch the show. Clearly, GT started a theme with the diarrhea. Uh, I love I love that I, I still have that rolling around that phrase, uh, your cum make gave me diarrhea, running around like a hamster on a wheel in my head. Your cum gave me diarrhea. That sounds like the most dangerous porno search ever. Like, if you're, if you're at a point in your life where you are putting cum into diarrhea in a search engine for porn, like, kiss your Bible, then your mother. Like, it is not too late to repent ye of gushing sin. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Speaking about it, you know, it's been sort of a diarrhea-themed week, so I'm, I'm glad that you got us started on that. I saw the most frightening billboard the other day as I was driving through Reseda. It said, uh, it said Dairy Queen, which I can't believe they're still eating Dairy Queens, but it said, uh, it said Dairy Queen, <laughs> 10 chili dogs for 10 bucks. <laughs> Whoa. Who? Who? If some, if you're traveling with somebody and they see that billboard, they're like, I'm going to get me some of that. Like, again, get the Bible, knock them out, tie them to the bed till the fever passes. Because if somebody wants to go to Dairy Queen and spend 10 bucks for 10 chili dogs, that person is obviously trying to commit suicide by diarrhea. And that is going to be on your heart for the rest of your life. Ten dollars for ten guys. Do the dudes behind the like counter wear hazmat suits and an oxygen tank? <laughs> Here you go. Enjoy your loneliness. I um, I don't know, man. I was uh, thinking about some uh, crazy stuff. I also, uh, much like uh, my uh, uh, Sarah Halstead, much. I'm also 45, and I'm trying to have a kid right now with my fiance. Both in that same uh, same thing. We're, uh, we, we, we just got engaged at Christmas, but she was like, we might want to move along and try and have kids right now. And I was like, are you sure? We can just wait until after that. She's like, dude, you're 45, I'm 40. If we don't have a kid right now in like a year or two, that kid will have antlers and a dorsal <laughs> pen. <laughs> just, come out, just come out with like eight crab legs like, father, you could still love me. I'm like, oh, man. This is, I could still love him though, I don't know. Just have me join a circus and then it'd be fun. It'd be, uh, <laughs> I gotta say, please, uh, she's here tonight, please give her a big round of applause. Silky, my fiance. Hey. She kind of looks like Judy from the Facts of Life without the roller skates. Yes. I landed that! It happens when you make that, that you make that bar show comic money. Woo! Money that boat! 
time I'll make it rain. What is it, eight dollars? Eight dollars. Yeah. Oh man, why don't we ride the bus home together? It'll be. <laughs> I am. I'm excited to be. Uh, I'm excited to be engaged. Uh, mostly because I'm so glad that I can finally get the fuck off of Tinder. Um, you know, a lot of you younger, good-looking folks, like you guys can run around on Tinder and have a pretty good time. That's fine. When you're my age and you look like Drew Carey's bloated corpse, um, you, you are not going to have a good time on Tinder. When you're my age and you're in Los Angeles, you go on Tinder, that's basically like saying, hey, serial killer in Tarzana, I want to be the second that you fuck start in the back of your pants. That's, because that's what's going to happen, folks. It's not so much a joke as a warning. I'm a prophet. I... <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I'm glad to be off of Tinder. I, I, I couldn't get into it before because, you know, like I'm, I'm the product of Irish immigrants. My, uh, my, you know, my parents, they, they had a really romantic... Did anybody here have parents or grandparents that have one of those super romantic stories for how they met? And they always tell it around the holidays? And my dad was an Irish immigrant. He looked like if John Goodman fell off a box of Lucky Charms and he had the brogue and everything, and he'd get drunk on whiskey every Christmas, we'd be like, Doc, tell a story about how you, how you met Mom. My dad would sit there by the fireplace, and he'd be like, okay, boys, well, I'll tell you the story, all right, here we go. Okay, the year was 1958, and me and my 27 brothers found out they were giving away jobs and vaginas in America. So we took 27 canoes, and we carved them into boats, and we went across the Atlantic, in search of our dreams, do do dee 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 and uh, we ran out of food halfway through our journey, and we had to eat Peter, Michael, Kelly, and Patrick, um, <laughs> which is why I named your sister after them. And uh, anyway, as we got to Boston, uh, we finally got a job at my uncle's dirt punching factory in Boston. And uh, on my third day at work, my boss sent me to go to the do the payroll at the bank because I was the only Irishman that had nine fingers and could count. Uh, <laughs> So I go to the bank, boys, and as I go to the bank, what do I see? But the most beautiful woman behind the partition I'd ever seen. She had red hair and green eyes and an ass you could put a Guinness on. And, uh, and I thought, Jesus, how will an immigrant Irishman like you ever pitch the woo to such a princess? So you know what I done, boys? I wrote a poem on the back of her check. I, I turned it over and I said, Hi, diddly die, your eyes are like green clovers, blue diamonds, and purple horseshoes. And I'm like, Hey, diddly day, I'll lick your pussy like it's made of Jameson's. No, I don't know. I, I, no, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I, I never read, actually read the real poem, but I guess it was lovely because I have five hundred brothers and sisters. And, um, but so my dad says, My dad puts it on the back of the check. Walks up to the thing, sticks the check in, looks my mom, my the, the woman who will be my mom, dead in the papers. He says, "Turn over the check, love." She turns it over. She reads the the thing, the poem that he wrote. When she looks up, my dad looks at her and he goes, "Yeah, my name is William James Lynch, and I'm from Donegal, Ireland. And you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Could I please take you to dinner, love?" And 61 years later, I'm the youngest of the six kids telling you that story tonight here in Los Angeles. Oh. What do you think? That's a good romantic story. You young dudes throwing your dicks all over the internet. What, what kind of story are you going to have to tell in 70 years when, you know, everybody's in the nuclear holocaust future with, like, motorcycles and mohawks and cannibals and shit? And somebody's gonna, some kid's going to say to you at 75, like, hey, old man, how did you meet your old woman? And what are you going to say when you're 75? You're going to be like, well, gather around, children, and I'll tell you the story. The year was 2019, and I was at a bar called the Lotus Lounge, and nobody would fuck me. No, not even a hand job from the girl on crystal meth, no. That's a, well, it looked like I was going back to my studio apartment in Burbank for Tostitos Rolls, a hearty jerk off, and some Xbox, followed by a light cry. And, uh, but luckily, I had my iPhone on me, which, uh, we, we, which is how we used to communicate before the Republicans put the V-chips in our buttholes. And uh, you all remember the great Verizon reverse part of 2075. And uh, I don't even know what that means. But, uh, and on these iPhones we had what was called Tinder, it was a dating application, it's how we got our dicks wet in 2019 because our mothers all drank and we all had a wee bit of autism. And, uh, 
And so I went down to this website called Tinder and I swiped and I swiped and I swiped to photograph a hoe after hoe after hoe after hoe after hoe after hoe. Ho. More hoes than Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Finally on swipe 975, I landed on a photograph of a hoe and oh what a hoe she was, children. She was bent over a Ford Fiesta with her ass in the air and a tattoo over the crack of her butt that said, Anything goes. And uh, I like show tunes, so I swiped to the right. And 26 minutes later, we were having sex in a Taco Bell off the 405. It was beautiful, and that's, what, that's how your father was born, actually. <laughs> that's my time, man. You guys are fun. Another round of applause for Mr. Shawnee! Yes. And congratulations on you guys uh, getting married and whatnot. And double congratulations on all the sex you had to work with that baby. <laughs> you know, and as a single man, I don't get to have a lot of sex, so I appreciate the sex you had. LA residents, are you tired of slippery floors? Are you afraid you might slip on your tile? Well, check out tightgripla.com. It's a local business coming out, surveying your floors, and treating it with a non-slip solution, a semi-permanent non-slip solution that will keep your floors safe, whether in the rain outdoors or indoors in the kitchen or bathroom areas that sometimes get wet and very slippery. So if you want safer floors and to not get injured while you're just walking around, check out tightgripla.com. Hey. Deanna Dixon. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, you've been doing, a, you're almost a regular on GT's comedy. Gym. Yeah, pretty regular, like regular like three times, <laughs> but they've each been t- fun. Last time I tripped down the stairs, I had like two sips of a margarita. Where at? Where at? Uh, the last place that at, I was. Uh, Universal Bar and Grill? Yeah, Universal Bar and Grill. I tripped and then I went to India the next day, remember? Oh, yeah, I yeah. remember. You were and saying then, you were leaving the country. Yeah, and then I hurt my hip. And- <laughs> In India? <laughs> no, on the staff at the, at the bar. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so then when I had to sleep in these little Indian beds, like my, my hip hurt. <laughs> why, why are Indian beds small? Because the people are small, and, and they don't need a lot of patty like us American fat girls. So yeah, I mean, we're like not California pat- queen. Is it? <laughs> it's a real it was, small bed? Yeah, it was like a single, you know. Just, like a twin. It was a twin. It was, oh. it was a bunk bed. Oh, we always say it, you know, when you're a missionary, you stay at, like, uncomfortable places. You're a missionary. Yeah, a missionary, too. So you're going there, and you're converting people. Yeah, yeah. Here, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm doing dirty comedy, and then I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you ever tried I'm to convert like, any of your people from the stage, though, when you're doing comedy? Um, uh, not, no, not from the stage. Or, or you mean from the States, you said? Stage, stage. From the stage. No, I haven't done that yet. Wow. <laughs> be teaching moral lessons yeah I could yeah, we all need it probably <laughs> <laughs> including myself so how, wow. the baby's doing good yeah I have two babies now I have an yeah, eight, yeah, 18 two babies. Month, well she's turning 18 months in a few days well, and you're already skinny uh, <laughs> for me this is not skinny for me but, but thank you um, okay. and yeah the new baby is one month old and uh, wow, uh, awesome. I would say the older baby is h- harder than the new baby if really? I didn't have the older baby the new, the new baby would be a piece of cake. <laughs> kind of. The only problem is I'm not allowed to put him down. If I put him down, oh. he cries instantly. So oh, I'm holding no. him at all times. Which oh. speaking of injuries, well, arms. I feel strong. like You're I strong. have like a sl- one arm in a sling at all times. I'm doing everything with one hand. Oh, no. Um, so I probably would have thought that was really hard, but uh, since that that's the only problem. Yeah. Now that I have the other baby, that's hard in all kinds of different ways. Yeah. I'm like, oh, he's easy. But actually, they're both hard in their own way. Yeah, they're both hard. <laughs> I Let's don't recommend finish. anyone listening to this. Do not have children. It will ruin your life. I don't recommend it. <laughs> I never had kids. So they, they didn't have a chance to ruin me. I, I want to make you feel good about that. <laughs> I know. I feel always so bad I didn't have kids. I, I would have felt bad, good. too. I would have felt horrible yeah. about it and felt like I was missing out. But yeah. now that I did it and I know I'm the other side and yeah. I'm driving in my car and I'm having a taste of freedom and yeah. I'm like, God, I had a good life. Why? <laughs> Why, Why did I ruin this? my life? It was so Why good. Why didn't you use a condom when you could have? <laughs> I don't know. It was horrible. Horrible. You trapped with this guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trapped in multiple ways. Yeah. It's worse than that, though, because I'm like, oh, you, 
my life has changed so much. She's like, my life changed too. I can't see hookers anymore. I'm like, no, that is nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. You wish she would get out of here. I can't even. I can't even take a shit anymore. I can't do anything anymore. This is horrible. And let alone like go places. Yeah. I have new ki- new ki- no kids. I could take. I can go take a shit anytime. Yeah. I mean, just think about things you <laughs> think about things you take for granted. Doing your hair. Yeah. Uh, reading a book. Uh, using watching your own movie. phone without watching somebody a, stealing it. <laughs> watching a R-rated movie. That's the best. Yeah, watching R-rated movies uh, without somebody begging to change it to stupid cartoons. <laughs> right. Driving around, going anywhere like cartoons, at night. I kind of like Going anywhere. Going, just leaving. Just going just anywhere. Leaving. Going it's at, horrible. Uh, that's why my brother used to go get beers at night when he had little kids. Yeah, but imagine they have to sleep on your head, and they sense you. They sense it when you leave. If you get yeah. up, they sense your absence, and they start well, screaming and crying. Well, the wife was crying. there, so yeah. Yeah, the guy, Except the job is easy yeah. for the guy. The babies don't care about yeah. the dad. They don't care. He can leave, come home, yeah. maybe once in eight hours. They're like, Daddy. And I'm like, oh, he's gone. Okay, yeah. big deal. <laughs> I had to leave to screaming. The yeah, they don't scream if the dad leaves. They're like, yeah, dad's yeah, gone. Yeah, I'm finally able to take a shower again. Oh, that's but, like. But the baby is in there with me. Oh, no stuck way. Stuck on my leg, the older baby. Oh, you should get him a little chair. Clinging to my leg. Get one of those senior chairs. You can <laughs> no, she wants, to, she wants to hold on to my leg. Like a tree trunk, oh, like no. I can't move. It's, it's awful. Not, it sounds horrible. It is horrible. <laughs> but just appreciate your life. Appreciate I'm glad everything. I can take by myself. I'm thinking about all the free time I had. I'm like, why didn't I achieve my hopes and dreams? I had so much free time. You could have been famous. I could have been famous. I could have been a famously Instead published author. No, well, I can't even write a text. At the Lotus Lab. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, anyway, <laughs> I, I don't know how long it's going to go on like this, but I'm like, oh, they go to school. People are like, it gets better when they're five. And so I'm like, well, when they're like 10, they get more. I'm like, 10? 10. God. Wait till they get better than they're 22 on meth and homeless, right? Well, yeah. I mean, then that could still happen. They could, yeah. You could put all this into them, and then they still end up on yeah. meth and homeless. So. Yeah. Or living with you. Yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, well, that's after they get off meth, and then they come oh, back Oh, God. To yeah. <laughs> I need, yeah, I need, where's the missionary? Why aren't you doing this work in the United States? Yeah. I'll, save I'll my pre- child. I'll preach to your child who's on meth. She's only 18 months. She doesn't understand anything, but okay. start now. I'll say, don't take meth. Repeat after me. She's like, meth? If you say don't, she doesn't know what the word don't means. Don't draw on the wall. What? Draw on the wall? Is okay, she... I'll say, do take meth. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. What, I don't know. It's like how people say, don't think of a pink elephant, and then right. you, you have the thought of a, you can't stop thinking about pink elephants. Right. I mean, it's the power of suggestion. Anyway. Okay, all right. well. Deanna. Deanna yeah. Dixon. D I C K. I'll see you next Dirty time. Dirty name for a clean lady. Doctor chiropractor. Yeah. Okay. Come see me when your back hurts. Uh, <laughs> it hurts. Up. It hurts. I'm holding the <laughs> babies all the time. All right, you'll have to come see me tomorrow. All right, where where can people find you online? Okay, um, <clears throat> Deanna Lynn Dixon uh, at gmail.com, but I'm on um, Instagram, Deanna Comic. Yeah, at Deanna okay. Collins. Yeah. Nice. Okay, thank you. All right, All right Deanna. Thanks All for coming through, Annie. All right, thanks, GT. So you guys ready for Jesse Bean to come to the stage? I said you ready for Jesse Bean to come to the stage. Oh, she's a wonderful young lady. Back home, she got a couple of letters with the DDs to begin the goddamn name. I don't know if it's Dick Dashley. I don't know if it's Don Dangerous. I don't know if it's Dad, Dick Dashley. Whatever she's called for this motherfucking people. Put your hands together. Show some love for the double D. Yeah. Dick Oh, guys. That reminds me. I was a, I'm, I'm a chiropractor, right? I'm a chiropractor. Can't even say that right now. I'm not even drunk. I am. <laughs> I, this one patient, he called me Dr. Double D. Right? My name is Deanna Dixon. He called me Dr. Double D. I mean, I was so offended because these are double E's. <laughs> Guys, I work for these. I eat for these. Yeah. I'll blow you for these. Uh, oh, gosh. That's really bad. I, <laughs> You know, I love being a chiropractor. I have six great tables. I mean, that's six times the opportunity to take a nap. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, without my patience, right? <laughs> yeah, I, um, <laughs> you know what, but I, one thing I hate about being a chiropractor is people always like, crack my back, crack my back. I mean, I hate that word. It sounds so painful. 
And actually, the Board of Chiropractic prefers that we use the word manipulate. Oh. Folks, yeah, I didn't need to go to 12 years of medical school to learn how to manipulate a man. <laughs> I just had to go to 12 years of high school school. Honey, can I borrow the credit card? Honey, if you cook the dinner and do the dishes, you might get a special mm. And but, mm, I mean, you get to take out the garbage. <laughs> Oh, and don't forget, I didn't forget, add a little basil. Thank you, babe. Um, yeah. Another thing, that's, <laughs> another thing that sucks about being a chiropractor is people are scared of you. They're, gonna, they're afraid you're going to break their bones, right? I mean, look, okay, I only broke one patient's bone. <laughs> yeah, but that was just doing reverse cowgirl. <laughs> Turns out I shouldn't have been on top. While being this large, <laughs> while swinging a lasso, look at you, Kevin, and holding a bowling ball. That, that was the problem there. I am. Um, another thing that pisses me off about being a chiropractor is people don't consider us real doctors. Okay, if I'm not a real doctor, then I can take my patients. Yeah. <laughs> and I got some good looking patients. <laughs> Guys, I don't date my patients. That'd be very unethical. I marry them. <laughs> yeah. I did actually marry not one, but two of my patients. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's the look that I, I was stupid. I, <laughs> yeah, my first husband, though, he couldn't get it up. I know, without the help, help of other ladies, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's okay because I got him back. We were at Disneyland at one of those ice cream kiosks. The guy's like, would you like some saucer? I'm like, no thanks. I brought my own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That marriage did not work out. I know he did the most unforgivable thing possible. He died. <laughs> I know. I mean, it was ridiculous. I mean, but it was weird because, like, looking in the open casket, that was the first time I saw him. That's it. <laughs> oh, guys. My second marriage not going well either, but not, <laughs> not because he died. Because he won't die. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> you laugh. Yeah. The thing is, he sounds like he's going to die. Every night, he's got sleep apnea. And he's, where he doesn't breathe for like 40 seconds at a time, now he's all... <clears throat> I'm like, go to the light. <laughs> so I can go to sleep. <laughs> and he starts breathing again. He's like... <clears throat> I'm like... <laughs> the tease of death. Uh, now he comes to bed with an old CPAP mask, right? Ladies, there's nothing more sexy. I didn't mean to look at you. <laughs> Ladies, <laughs> there's nothing more sexy than sleeping next to Doc Vader. Uh, watching him wiggle his lightsaber. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's now he still he still tries to get some. With that evil looking mask, he's like, I'm your father. Come to death. Um, yeah, I get asthma, <laughs> especially when I'm doing it missionary style. I mean, like, it, sometimes it gets so bad I have to take a hit off my husband's CPAP mask while we're having sex. I'll be like, Are you done yet? Are you there yet? I'm like, I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I'm kidding, guys. I never come. <laughs> yeah, what, what sucks now is this husband, He now he's having a hard time getting it up. Yeah, far enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, I looked into Viagra. You guys, they want 60 bucks a pill. I know. I mean, that comes out to... 20 bucks an inch. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be way cheaper for me to cheat on him. <laughs> Actually, I did try cheating on him. This one guy sexted me from church, right? This hot young guy. I mean, and he asked me to sex him back. The only thing is, I didn't know what part of me to send. I mean, nothing looks good anymore. My boobs are saggy, my arms are flabby. Oh. So I sent him a picture of one of my eyeballs. 
I know. I don't. I don't think it worked for him. But <laughs> okay. But then, um, guys, if he, I finally did send him a naked pic. The only thing is, like, the bad news was I don't think it worked for him. But the good news is, I got a group on for a free bikini wax. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he must have been bohemian, bohemian because he was. He must have been in the deforestation. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, it's, it sucks because I got busted for sending him that naked pic. And not once, but three times. Apparently I'm not as smart as my phone. It was embarrassing. I got called into the pastor's office. The pastor's like, if you do, if you get caught one more time doing this, you're not going to be able to come back to my house. <laughs> uh, thank you, again. Be on Instagram. He's done a great job. Another round of applause for Double G, the head of this one. Hello. Yeah. Good. Good. I like it. I like it. Good stuff. Good stuff. So for real, we actually got two comedians left this time. DT set me up before. He wanted to make me look bad. Because you know, that's, that's what white men do to black men. He set himself to look bad. All right. Y'all don't worry. That's because a lot of you guys are white. <laughs> I'm playing. That's our show, guys. Thanks a lot for uh, listening. And goodbye. Hope to see you live. Enjoy the next episode of Dive Bar Comedy.